In this video, we will look at transfer learning, one of the strategies um, used for training deep neural networks when the uh, number of data points available for training for the particular task that you are interested in is very low. So, the idea here is to use what is what we can refer to as a pre-trained model. Okay. So, so for instance, let us say you have you, are, you have some data wherein you are trying to figure out uh, for a particular task. Okay, and it's not a, it's not an imaginary challenge. For instance, you are trying to determine a species of birds, or easier still, you have data. You have a limited number of data to determine the make or the make and model of a car depending from the pictures. Let's say this is some hypothetical task. But then you do not have enough data, maybe you have thousands of data points, but uh, that is not sufficient for training a deep neural network. So, what you would do is you would take a network like um, AlexNet or VGG or Inception, which has been trained on ImageNet database. Uh, do a forward pass through the pre trained network, so forward, forward pass the data, right and store the embedding. So, if in the case of AlexNet um, or VGG, you have about 4096 neurons in the output layer before the classification layer. You take this as a representation of your data. So, now your input data is now represented by 4096 length feature vector. So, that is a feature that represents your data. And you use this as input to another machine learning framework, let us say an SVM support vector machine or binary trees or maybe just another neural network uh, that you can train with this data and classify it appropriately. Okay. So, this is a um, strategy that works very well that is taking the embedding in this case this 4096 D vector would be the embedding that you get from your CNN. So, this strategy works very well if the task at hand is the data for the task at hand or the task at hand is similar to uh, something that the ImageNet accomplishes. In this case, we have, since we are talking about ImageNet, uh, we will take that as the uh, standard. So, ImageNet um, networks, the, the network trained on ImageNet data, uh, pretty much is a, it's a classification network or image recognition network. It is trained on thousands of types of images okay. um, and, and you can safely assume that it has learnt all kinds of possible features okay, corresponding to the images from the wild present in the ImageNet database. Now, if your input data is very similar in our case I example I quoted that you know types of type and make and model of the car or let us say even uh, type of species of birds uh, or for instance species of cats or dogs. Okay that data is kind of similar to ImageNet data. So, if you have a network trained on ImageNet data, maybe then you can use this 4096D representation uh, as a reduced uh, representation of your input data and then use another machine learning paradigm to train it in order to accomplish your task. However, in some cases, the data might not exactly be the same. Um, or maybe uh, there is pro you probably have a slightly larger data set. In that case, what you can do is you can take the network with pre trained weights, okay. modify the classification layers from 1000 neurons to the number of classes in your new data set that your task demands, and then train the network. So, this, this, uh, this portion of training the network is basically training the network with whatever data you have for your task and this process is uh, this this training with your excess data is, is referred to as fine tuning. Okay. And in general this is what people refer to as transfer learning. Okay. So, you start with a network that has been trained on a very large database and most often than not the, that, that image database is very similar or the task to be accomplished is very similar to the task that you are now proposing to do with your current deep CNN. And then you use your limited data set to 
modify the weights in your network appropriately by using a backprop and this typically works very well in many cases. So, the reason it works as I stated earlier is that if you have a fairly large uh, database which is labeled just like the ImageNet database okay, considerable effort has gone into making that. So, and if you have a network trained on it couple of things one is that given the size of the database and the depth of the network you are trained on safe to assume that the network has learned all kinds of low level features which are transferable to other tasks. So, here the deeper layers let us say uh, for some CNN trained on ImageNet the deeper layers learn task specific features. So, for instance speech is specific to a certain breed of dog or cat. Um, these are easier to train as the these are closer to the classification layer. So, the errors back propagate faster, faster. The initial layers learn more generic lower level features like edges, blobs, some kind of patterns in the picture and generally difficult to train because of the uh, errors being the difficult to back prop the errors from the output layer to the innermost layers. So, if you have a network which is trained on a fairly large database on a task which is kind of very similar closer to what you are or at least uh, related to what you are going to do then it is safe to assume that at least that the low level features learned by that network are transferable to your task. Okay. Um, so, we just try to exploit that that features learned by this already trained the pre trained network for your task and since the deeper layers are easier to train compared to the innermost layers the earlier layers in the network fine tuning the data uh, your network pre trained network with the data that you have uh, will hopefully modify your outermost layers and adapt it to the task at hand. So, um, so in general when we try to do this uh, transfer learning one strategy is to freeze the initial layers because as I mentioned earlier you would expect that the low level features are also transferable to your data. In some cases it is possible that even the you are using the pre trained network because you uh, feel that that net the you can you can say that the weights have been initialized to a pretty good value after training uh, through with that large database. But then your task or your input data is slightly is totally not related to uh, the network you are using. So, for example, in the for the second case, let us say you are trying to accomplish a radiologic task, we will look at a case study later on. So, you are trying to classify chest x ray scans, right. Right. So, we are looking at chest x ray scans are being abnormal or normal. Okay. Now, this data chest x ray scan data is not similar to ImageNet data at all, it is quite drastically different, but then you would still like to exploit you know a deep the deep network that has been initialized with pre trained weights, but then in this case you would have to necessarily train from scratch. Okay. So, but in that case the assumption is that you have enough data to do so. And this is another mode of transfer learning even though you were use the pre trained network as a good initialization of weights and you would still go ahead and train all the weights in all the layers using the data available to you. So, just to illustrate so what are some of the points that we have talked about earlier. So, ideally if you have data which is let us say similar to in this case I am since I am looking at here this is AlexNet. Okay, we looked at this before. So, your data is similar to ImageNet and then you have a classification or recognition task right. Then what you would do is you would just drop this out 
and then replace it by say in this case let us say you want looking at 10 breeds of dogs instead of 1000 you will have 10 output and then train or fine tune with whatever data that you have for the task. Okay. But then let us say your input is uh, radiology data, chest x-ray. So, dissimilar but large data. So, you take the of course, you would modify still go ahead and modify the output layer. Um, let us say you need only normal versus abnormal. So, instead of 10 you will have just one output right you can say 0 or 1 um, and you would train the entire network. This is assuming that you have radically different data, but then you have enough of it. So, because there are if you know AlexNet has several million parameters 60 million and if you want to train them you need to have as many data sets of course, you also do data uh, augmentation in order to increase the size of your uh, data set artificially. So, given that the data is dissimilar on the task of so chest x-ray is the good example or medical data in general medical imaging data in general or some sort of form of spectral data which is not similar to ImageNet then you would have to train the network from scratch, but you can use the pre-trained network the pre-trained weights as a good initialization. Okay. So, that is typically the, this is recommended. So, in any case even for in, in any case if you have enough data let us say you have hundreds of like, tens of millions of data points let us say images for instance for some particular task. One thing you can still do is to keep the network keep the network architecture retain network architecture. this case I have shown network, but you feel that you want to use inception or some other model that is fine, but you train from scratch. So, that way you have you, you do have a structure a say an architecture that has been proven to work with large data sets image data sets. So, you can use that same uh, architecture. Uh, even uh, try to see if the some of the training uh, <coughs> hyperparameters can be applicable or not and use your data to train it from scratch. Only if in the only if in the case where you have dissimilar data, but you do not have enough of it ok. Um, so, the sense that it is not millions, but maybe you have several thousands and then you can do data augmentation maybe you have tens of thousands. Um, then you still the idea would be to freeze some of these layers ok and and also yes and that is to train the final layers let us say may, maybe train these few layers using your data and hope for the best ok. The assumption behind freezing these layers is that, uh, that at least you have believe that the local features the uh, low level features learnt are transferable to your task that you are interested in. So, um, this all these strategies put together typically is learned uh, referred to as transfer learning wherein you uh, to put it in simple terms you take a pre trained network and see if you can just modify it slightly to accomplish your task of interest ok. So, the, the other um, scenario that I think I referred to alluded to earlier on is when your data is actually very similar to let us say in this case you are looking at AlexNet trained on ImageNet data. Maybe you have a very similar data <coughs> since let us say you are looking at cat breeds or dog breeds you want to identify different type of dog breeds based on just the picture. You can just then as we discussed earlier just take this embedding out and put it through let us say another neural network and you have either you know 10 outputs 100 dog breeds let us say or 10 dog breeds ok. Such a thing is possible ok. So, if it is very similar then you do not have to 
uh, maybe even train from scratch or try even do a fine tuning, you can take the embedding from the network. Okay. Uh, this is done in many cases. So, for instance, if you are if you are trying to do um, tasks like um, video segmentation, video frame segmentation, or trying to do object detection, then many of the inputs look like uh, the objects in your inputs look like objects in, let's say, ImageNet. Then you can use ImageNet directly in such uh, um, the sense the networks trained on ImageNet directly in such applications. Okay. You to look, when, you, when you move across applications, then you have to be careful about how you are going to accomplish transfer learning. 